In this video, we upgrade our lithium iron phosphate battery bank from 8 cells to 20 lithium cells for a combined capacity of 11.5 kilowatt hours. Welcome back everyone. As you might be able to tell from the farm equipment, we're back in the prairies of Saskatchewan. Camped out here next to our shipping container that has the last of our stuff in it and uh, we're here to do some upgrades and visit with family and friends of course but mostly upgrades uh, first things first let's upgrade our batteries so if you've seen our other videos you'll know that i blew up our solar controller by not first switching off the solar uh, inputs so be sure to switch off the solar before powering down the system and lastly i'm going to cut the uh, power to all the internals in here so to power everything temporarily while I've got the batteries all out, I've got this battery bank actually built out of old laptop cells. And so that's uh, 18650 cells I used to build this pack. And that is just jumper cabled up to our power distribution block. And I have a battery monitor on there just to uh, keep the fridges and lights going while we're doing this. So under here, these are our eight original lithium iron phosphate cells, and this space here is where I want to put all 20. So the nice thing about these cells is they can be mounted in any orientation, and because they're individual cells, they're modular, so I could put, you know, another row down here, another row up here stacked up like this. And, and put them all out this way, but then I need to find a fancy way to strap them all down and that doesn't have the same visual oomph as if they were all together in one block. Now, unfortunately, back here to the front, if I put them all in one block, they wouldn't fit. They'd stick out too far this way and if I turned them the other way they wouldn't fit. So the only way they'll, they'll fit in here is on their sides stacked up like this from front to back like this which you'll see in a moment but it's so tight there's not even room for a box you can see our original one here I made a box with a plexiglass cover for the terminals and there won't even be room for that so I'm going to put them in here and then build a box around the rest of it okay so in dealing with big batteries you certainly wouldn't want to be swinging around a wrench like this which would have the possibility of shorting out to the next cell so I'm using a socket and I've even put some uh, hockey tape over the shaft just to keep, keep anything from touching and I'm taking off uh, these bus bars as I go so there's no chance of something moving around and shorting you don't want to loosen them all and then leave them flopping around. Okay, so a word on why we're doing this upgrade. This is five kilowatts of lithium. This would be more than enough for a weekend warrior or going out camping a week at a time. If you knew you were going to have good sunny weather, the solar has no problem keeping us charged and keeping us alive. But when you live full time in a rig like this, you're not always guaranteed to have a good forecast and and have good sun and we found some situations where uh, we would be charged by 10 a.m. and then the solar panels just switch off and then the next week we had 10 days of rain and you know five days in dense forest where we got essentially no solar and then every day we'd be down 10 percent more than the day before so uh, we found this deal on these lithium batteries on eBay for $150 per cell and it was just too good to pass up. So I maxed out the space in here with as many cells as we can hopefully fit and, uh, and that will give us 11.5 kilowatts total which would last us for 10 to 15 days maybe of no sun at all. So that'll just give us a little bit of comfort uh, that we can go into a, 
a densely wooded campground and not have to worry about running out of power and needing to go into the sun to recharge again. Okay, so to understand how to wire a bunch of individual cells like this, you need to understand series and parallel. And very simply, if we look at the back of our Max Air uh, remote controller, you'll see two AAA batteries, and those are wired in series. So they're 1.5 volts each, but they're wired positive to negative, so that you get a total of 3 volts. Now take that knowledge and come here. I have four 3.2 volt lithium cells. And if you look at the voltmeter up here, you can see they're at 3.43 volts. And I should check each cell. 3.4, 3.4, 3.4. 3 no surprise. So they're each 3.4 volts. Now, most uh, RV equipment is going to be 12 volts. So if you connect the positive of one to negative of the other, just like in the uh, remote control there, positive to negative, positive to negative. Now when we measure the sum of all of these, it's 13.5 volts, which is correct. So that's how you get a 13 or 12 volt battery out of four individual cells. So if I put these all in series, of course, that would be way too high of a voltage. So then what you do is wire them in parallel. So this is what we'll be doing. We have 20 cells in total, but I'm going to have five wired in uh, parallel like this. So then if I measure the voltage of this, you can see it's still 3.4 volts. So this doesn't increase the voltage, but it increases the capacity. So instead of 180 amp hours per cell, I'll have 900 amp hours at 3 volts. So basically what I'm doing here, I'm going to make four packs of five cells in parallel, and then those four supercells will be wired in series to make the 12 volts at 900 amp hours, or 11.52 kilowatts of power. Now, it's very important that the voltages be the same of each cell. So these batteries I'm using right now are all our original batteries. They're about two years old and had a couple hundred cycles on them. And uh, the new batteries that we just received are also used. And they're of approximately the same age. And you need to be very sure the voltage is exactly the same. Now, I achieved that by setting our charge controller top voltage to 4. Point, or rather 3.4 volts uh, so that yesterday we discharged and then when we were charging today the uh, charge controller stopped charging them at 3.4 volts which is the voltage of all of the cells that I received. Uh, another point for the safety police is I will be putting two of our original cells in each of the four supercells that way they're uh, the load has been distributed between old cells and new cells in parallel and uh, there should be no risk of anything in that way. There's just so many batteries. Okay guys, got it all in. As you can see, 20 cells fits in here super tight. Uh, if I had put this in a box, I just the box wouldn't have fit. Um, I have about a half inch left to spare here, which you might be able to see is just enough room to squeak through these uh, little wires here, which come up through the floor. So I will now box this in a little better and wedge it, and, and uh, they are all stuck in here, but they need to be fastened much better, of course. 
and I'll get to that boring stuff maybe even off camera. Okay guys, got them all bus barred up here as you can see. These five here are uh, one supercell, and down here these five are a second, then third, and fourth, five parallel cells in a supercell, and then as you can glean, they run positive to negative this way. And I ran out of the copper bus bars. The used ones that I bought only came with one cell per battery, so I grabbed a scrap of aluminum bar there and made bus bars for those. And as I'm sure you can tell, uh, the uh, balance leads here are all tapped on each of the cells. Oops. Okay guys, today is tomorrow. It's a windy one out there, but I'll do what I can. The uh, inverter was installed temporarily last night just so we could get by and then uh, this morning I got two gauge welding cable and ran two leads for uh, positive, two for negative in parallel and everything has been zap tied down, all the other cables are zap tied in place and the batteries are super firm. So that's what I've done here on the inside. Now going outside sheet of uh, half inch polycarbonate acrylic and I've cut that into shape and that's going to fit up here over top of the batteries to protect all these terminals and as you can see I've got some classy red LEDs up in there to make it uh, extra classy for when we're giving tours Okay, I'm pretty sure this is a bad idea and that it will not work, but if you're seeing this, then it worked flawlessly. So, as I said I was going to do, I've put a white kitchen bag over the batteries here, over top of the wires and, and everything I want to form it to, and I've kind of taped it in place in the corners, and I'm going to use great stuff, big gap filler, uh, expanding foam, which you probably know is activated by humidity. So I'm going to use this spray bottle and mist some water in there and hope this works. kind of squarely like that. the floor for this walk on here. All right guys, I don't have time to make a proper clip for this. Got to get rolling, but uh, you can see the white uh, kitchen garbage bag there. Uh, the foam is filled up and just almost perfectly filled that space. It, it's pretty firm, so I imagine that's putting some nice clamping force on the batteries, uh, filling in the top and and uh, you know, molding around those big cables, keeping them everything nice and secure in there. So I think that's a good solution. Uh, it would have been more fun if it had all blown out the side and made a big mess, but it worked. So I'm going to get this plexiglass installed and then roll some b-roll here uh, and get some glamour shots for that. Like, thank you all for watching, hope that was informative, it's kind of a rush video but I did what I could. So thanks so much for watching, I'll see you next time.